shun, stun the newborn Christian, but his spirit won't let him forget it. Oh, that ain't like the sister back at, I, I did a, a lecture for a family group, one of these uh, family reunions in, in, uh, in Cleveland. And this sister was sitting way in the back there, about 50 folks, all with the same last name, you know. And I, I ran John 10, 31, 36 on. And when I said, and know ye not that ye are gods? And her face went like this. Oh, oh no. <laughs> now, she was a student at the International Theology Association, ITA. And she could not believe this, that that was in the Bible book that she was studying. You know, you know, and, and like the brother, another Negro preacher down in the do donut shop, that ain't what that ain't, that ain't what that means. <laughs> Then after he read it again and, and listened to his spirit, then he t said to me, you, you can't say that. I, I can say that, but you, you can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what kind of worms is working in the back of his head. <laughs> but that's the theme of every scripture on planet Earth, godhood, divinity for both man and woman. That's where we're striving and trying to get to. <clears throat> These are the 12 people on planet Earth. No matter what color, what size, what height, what language, what culture, it ain't but 12 down here. We all fit into the circle of 360 degrees and the 12 signs of the zodiac, the mother Zodiacus. Tell them what that means, my brother. All right, and what is her web? What is her web? Anybody, what is her web? The zodiac is her web. <laughs> the web, the spider's web. Okay, and where is a symbol of that spider's web found? All right, okay. The mother Zodiacus is the one hidden in masonry and more science. And Zudekias means what? Speak up so they can hear you, my brother. All right, thank you. <laughs> Don't let me do all the talking today. <laughs> this is the review. How many planets are in our solar system? No. Right. Or at least there are seven planets in the two of the spheres are considered planets. Oh. This thing don't, won't, doesn't tilt like it should. Should be able to pull it out a little bit. If it were a highly technical, <laughs> if it were a highly technical blackboard, <laughs> we're not talking about the spheres out there in so much of how it influences them. We're talking about energy. The planets are conduits that energy works through. The, these so-called numbers are symbols, not of planets, but of energy. Okay, the, the major factor is we are energy beings living in an energy environment, be, in, energy environment being influenced by energy that is intelligent. That's what we need to know. We live not in a civilization, but a symbolization. And we are learning to read nature and how nature functions in relationship to each one of us and the collective. And the path, the journey, the Torah, the Torah that we're on. The sun, the source of life, the source of physical life. There, there is a, if there is a physical sun, there is also a Come on, you keep bothering readers. Spiritual. spiritual son. The law of correspondence. As above, so below. As within, so without. Okay. Is that going to help, son? Well, body. thank you, my brother. See, this is a real scientist here. He wouldn't solve the problem like that. That's what Moors do. They solve the problem. Very good, my brother. Now, is that going to be on camera? See, I don't have a camera crew here. 
They come and set the camera here, and they go in the back and sit down. Okay. Huh? We what? get you covered and go. Oh, okay. All right. Very good. All right. I'm covered then. Is that what you're trying to tell me? I got you covered. All right, my brother. <laughs> The moon's energy, the sustainer of life, as it affects and influences the subconscious part of our thinking mechanism. That's what sustains us on this planet. Most 85% of our human behavior and functionality is subconscious. It is involuntary. So this energy, the moon, affects not only the subconscious, but also the dark side of our mind as you would have it, the, 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 si the dark side of the moon, <laughs> as it's referred to, where those angry and frightening thoughts hide and give us nightmares <laughs> every now and then, particularly as, as it's raised and stimulated. And also, very importantly, this is the part of the, the mind that gets people into chemical trouble when the energy affects the subconscious part of our nature. And when I say that, I'm talking about glands. The 12 glands, major glands, the secretive glands. We have seven ductless, non-secreting glands, but the 12 glands that are affixed to our organs, those are the ones that secrete a corresponding chemical or chemistry to thought. I don't have my, my lemon here today. In fact, I ate it Friday. <laughs> I finally got a lemon to the class to, to demonstrate the influence of an idea on human chemistry. I could just sit here and talk about delicious, juicy lemons and strawberries and get y'all's glands going, you know. We need to understand that. If you develop a chemistry of some peculiar type that gives you a peculiar craving, that influence is essentially planetary. When I say peculiar, I'm talking about the energy of both Neptune and Pluto. Neptune is responsible for chemicalization on this planet. A craving for. We have cravings for chemicals. See, F fruit juices are chemicals. That's natural. But an overstimulation of a affected or afflicted gland or glandular state would create a craving for a non-unnatural chemical. That's what appeals to those that run to the drug boy to satisfy this urge to be happy. The urge, the hunger is legitimate. They really want to be happy. But somebody else says, this is how you be happy. And hands them like, dude asked me for a light up here on, uh, I'm pointing this up here on uh, Cascade and uh, uh, Beecher one night. And I gave him, gave him a light. He said, hold out your hand. So I held up my hand. And he gave me about five or six, six reds. <laughs> you know, just gave them to me, you know. And I, I looked at him, you know, and I'm first thinking it might be a little hot, you know. And look, what the hell is this shit? <laughs> you know? And he just, huh? What Uppers. You know? But he, he was trying to build him a new customer. Oh. Or the downers. I don't know which one. The uppers or downers. I, and I threw a damn thing in the street, you know? I thank God I didn't get trapped in there because I, I got an obsession, I, the capacity for obsession. I'm obsessed, obsessed with knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> it, but if I had been, you know, in food with that stuff, I'd be out there too, you know. Those that have a capacity for obsession, you know. And, and what's interesting, I've done several charts of, of quote, crackheads, drug users, and they got 33s, 22s, 11s, all in the chart, all these master numbers, you know. But they got to get through that stuff before they can find out what their lives are about. And a lot of them don't make it through. They don't get there. Okay, let's go on here. We we're going to review all of this. These are the aspects in the charting process of astrology that gives the correct angle of a position on the chart.
take one and pass one back? That's a chart coming to you. No, it's not a chart. It's part of the horoscopios, the hour view. Horoscopios, the hour view or horoscope. 180 degrees is equals the vibration of awareness. The conjunct is 0 to 10 degrees, which equates with power. The square is 90 degrees, which deals with the obstacles in your chart or charting. The triune angle of 120 degrees indicates creativity and the level of type of harmony or inharmony because all of the chart is contingent upon afflictions in that chart. The sextile position, 60 degrees, indicates our opportunity or opportunities, plural, because there usually are more than one opportunity when opportunity comes a knocking. And that is the law of rhythm. Opportunity comes and knocks. Do you open your door and let it in? Do you go toward the opportunity? Or do you go around it? If you're a program for a failure, you find yourself going in the exact opposite of where your success is. That's the part of our psyche we have to change. This learned failure. We've learned how to fail. We've been conditioned to be mediocre. See? And we have to unlearn that. The semi sextile, half is semi, of 30 degrees, a slight beneficial aspect. The parallel of, of the, these, now these are minor here. These are the minor. One, two, three, four, five are the major angles that the astrologer is concerned with. The other are minor aspects that would come later in your studies. Okay? The law of duality is represented by the parallel line as we just talked about. When Noah built the ark and pulled all the animals in two by two, <laughs> This is Aquarius. A goat. A crab. <laughs> he got all the animals in. <laughs> he had all. <laughs> Here the animals he put in the ark. <laughs> and then Noah barred the door, closed the door, closed the circle. <laughs> put all the animals in there, two by two. <laughs> Each sign has a correspondent sign. That's the duality, you see. And again, if we keep in mind, there are only 12 blueprints on planet Earth. Everybody down here fits into that circle okay, with slight and wonderful variations of differences in your abilities, powers, level of consciousness, direction of your life. But we all fit into Mother Zudekias. <laughs> and each of these aspects here, the triune aspect shows the elements. A young lady was asking me about the inverted and, and constructed triangle. Fire, earth, air, and water. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, fire, earth. What are three earth signs? Anybody? One. Come on with them, y'all. Two. Come on, Virgo, where you at? Speak up. 
<laughs> you ain't got a Virgo in here? Virgo, yeah. Right, okay. Water sign. One. Two. Cancer. Thank you. Three. Air signs. One. Two. Uh, three. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Okay. But remember that Noah is the knower. <laughs> <laughs> and the knower is the soul. Three aspects of your nature, the knower, the thinker, and the doer. And they all hire a Biff. <laughs> hire him king of Tyre, hire him a Biff, and hire him of Tyre. But that's all the lure of Masonic signs. Is all based on Hiram Abiff, not Jesus. Okay. But Hiram Abiff represents the Christ like one. But here in that particular avenue it would be on the occult plane of light. Okay. I don't think we want to go through each planet. We won't get very far. I wanted to review all of this information here. So at least we'll have it aspected in our consciousness and some notes on it. This is the, the fan of those degrees spread out so you can see how it looks in its construct. We just, we just went through that. We don't need to do that again. The bull is who? Taurus. Right, Taurus the bull. And uh, briefly, uh, in terms of the aspects of those 30 degrees, the sense of values. Uh, possessions and material things. That's the house that Taurus is in. Second house, the house of money. How much you have and, and is it yours? <laughs> it's a very important position in the chart when astrologers look because much can be told in that particular second house. The astrological motto of Taurus is I have. Uh, these are people who are given charge of not just possession, but the care of things on planet Earth. We're all in charge of something in the creation. Uh, you see, uh, we, we are not only visitors, tourists, and lords of the Earth, we're also caretakers of the planet. You know, it, no, no matter what position we're placed in our cultural status, we're still responsible for the planet. When you raise up, then you become the landlord. But as it would be, most of our landlord isn't what lord of the land means. It certainly is one of them. You should own something in America <laughs> besides a coat and a dress and a suit that's going to go out of style next year when they raise a woman's skirt. Oh, honey, you got on that long skirt. That, that's out of style. Then they pull it all the way down. Then next year, it's a, Honey, you wearing that short skirt? That's out of style. And your clothes are <laughs> gone out. You know, that's what they've been doing with fashion and style. You know? Uh, brand new stuff. People give it away, throw it away, and don't wear it because it's, quote, out of style. Charles governs the ear, the one that hears. One of their best qualities is that they're willing to listen. But that don't mean they're going to do what you ask or tell them to do because they have a sense of determination and when they are not intelligent or ignorant of who they are, they can be some of the most stubbornest people on the planet. So they find themselves always having neck and back problems. Self-will for Taurus affects the, the, the brain stem. Self-will for Aries affects the head. Self-will for Leo affects the heart. Okay. Whatever part of your body is that is represented in the 360 degrees, the negative forces affects those sensitized parts of your physical anatomy. 
Therefore, if it affects your physical anatomy, it then affects your astral or spiritual anatomy because you have an astral body inside that looks just like the one you have on the outside unless you've been transformed by the renewing of your mind. <laughs> then, then you look like you did when you were first created. That's what we're trying to get back to, this perfect one. Okay, the area that Taurus governs is the medulla oblongata, and I pointed out last Friday, for those of you who have not taken our wonderful course, there's a secret here in this word. Look at that. Huh? Look at this. That's supposed to be a U. That's medulla. Huh? Oblongata. <laughs> but y'all have to be at the Friday class to get that secret. <laughs> so that dangle your carrot. <laughs> the uh, parathyroid gland is a major gland for Taurus the bull. The planet of Taurus the bull is Venus. Yes, sir. Because I turned to the second house, <laughs> and I'm glad you missed it. Where is my, a oh, I didn't put Aries in here. It's on a card. I'm sorry, Aries. We'll get, well, I'll get back to you. <laughs> I'm still waiting to do your chart. You, you, you're missing your own point there. You're supposed to have your own chart in front of you. Gemini, the planet Mercury, I think the twins, not two boys, not two girls, a boy baby and a girl baby, the positive and negative feminine and masculine principle is indicated by Gemini, okay? The European is the one that's putting two little boys up there, two little girls. Uh, do, again, duality. Th th this is one of the more interesting uh, glyphs, the reason I outlined it so well. The two, the two poles r are represented of heaven and earth, and uh, the electromagnetic polarity between those planets, which is in masonry is called Jacques Finn and Boaz. <laughs> yes, that's right, Jacques Finn and Boaz. Yes, in uh, the building of Solomon's temple, these two pillars are, are placed in the temple. And, and these two pillars represent your cerebral spinal cord and your sympathetic spinal cord, as we were talking about earlier, about being able to experience duality on this plane. And those two cords represent the anointed ones in the book of Revelation. See tape number dash, 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 whatever it is. <laughs> okay. I heard something about that. What, what's that? Dr. and Boaz. No, that, that's on the outside. We, we talk about what's on the inside represented the real science. Right. Remember that the, the Kabbalistic writer or, or writers took ancient Moorish knowledge under the all species of Egyptian knowledge and coinized it under Jewish Hebrew symbology. Okay. okay, that's why you have all men names that are important in the scripture instead of some important women names, except Ruth is probably the most important feminine name in the, in the Bible with any status. If you read the book of Ruth, you're reading about the Eastern star. Esther is important, <laughs> Esther is important too. Esther is Aster is the star. Yes, uh -huh. and of course, huh? Martha. Martha. N not as important as Ruth uh, in terms of truth. Let's see, and in terms of the eastern star, because we're just looking for one star, she's only looking to see if there's a star coming in the east. The east is the heart. <laughs> uh, the the, the heart. inner, the inner is the east. The inner man, the front of the body, is the east. The inside, yes, ma'am, is the east. Yes, dear. Come on, I got a couple seats up here, sweetheart. Come on up. You know you're always welcome. Love to see you, Mary Magdalene. The two Marys, yeah, the, the represent 
the power of, of the head and the power of the feet, the, the, the position of illumination. Uh, when, when Jesus was laid out, uh, one Mary was at his head and the other Mary was at his feet. Okay, the, the, those are the points of illumination. The, the Let me light. Divine rebirth, not just life and light. No, light means truth to that. Yes, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. L light is a synonym for truth. Truth is a synonym for light. You know, but, but remember, wisdom words always reach spirit, mind, and body, all three planes. That's one of the, the, the great importances of scriptures, anybody's scriptures. Uh, they, they reached all three planes. We're, what we're doing here, for those who just came in, we're reviewing uh, the, 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 the information we've gone through over the past uh, 12 weeks, and we're going rather quickly because I want to try to get all of it in. The caduceus is the symbol of Hermes, Trismegistus. For those of you who have read the Kibalion or reading the Kibalion, this was a black man who became God or God who became a black man, one or the other, would be true. Well, <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good to be black. <laughs> the caduceus. This is your vertebrae. This weaving around of these two serpents are your kundalini, kunda, line, uh, 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 Circle, lini, line, coil, kunda, coil, lini, line, kundalini. Moving up your vertebrae, up to your medulla oblongata. The wings represent power over your body, power over the earth, which makes you more lord of the earth. If you look at unity stuff there, reach up and get that brown book there, my brother. Right in front of you. That's it. Yes, sir. That's, that's it. This is Unity's book. And I want you to see the symbol they have on the cover of their Christian book. See those Egyptian wings there? Uh, so we, we know where Fillmore got his inspiration from. His information. Oh, they didn't change it. Yeah. Ain't that something? Now, now, on the other one, yeah, let me see here. Let me see. Now, the first copy of this was a blue book. And it had on it a pair of wings with a uh, circle in the center. But they then changed it to the right angle, the square and the compass. I'll be darn, ain't that something? <laughs> well, this is an excellent book, though. This is an excellent book in understanding and appreciating this concept of these 12 glands in our body. I, 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 I give a, a lot of credit to, to Fillmore. He, he did his work. And you, you keep, knows what his name was, Phil Moore. <laughs> you know, and, and in fact, in his uh, autobiography, he, there's a picture of him w w with his goatee on. You know, he's got his little coat on, trying to stand up like a Moor. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he knew what was up. I, I don't know if it's in here or not. Yeah, there it is. Right there. Pass it around later, about to see that little symbol. Okay. I think, says Gemini, uh, we got, uh, uh, oh, for those who do not have Kibalians, we now have six Kibalians in. <laughs> no, we got four. Uh, I had a dream, a, 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 a stack of Kibalians like this, you know, and it almost played. It was 614, played 614, and they threw 645 out there again. <laughs> <laughs> back to damn back. <laughs> oh, well, that's how that game goes. Okay, so the, the planet energy of Gemini is Mercury, and it's, it is exalted in Virgo. We'll deal with that, what that exaltation, exaltation means later. It governs the shoulder, the lungs, the arms, the hands, the nervous system. Uh, uh, and of course, there are two of each of those things which again is duality. The nervous system is important for Geminians to understand because if they're not harmonious in their thinking and in their feeling nature, they become neurotics.